deep in the forest of Albion lay the small town of Oakvale, unchanged by time and untouched by the sword. Here lived a boy and his family, a boy dreaming of greatness, of one day being a hero. Sometimes he imagined himself as a noble knight or a powerful wizard. And other times he dreamt he'd be an evil warrior. But in all his dreams of greatness, he could not possibly imagine the power of the destiny that lay before him. Come on, wake up. Daydreaming again, were you? Just like your mother, mind always wandering. Well, let it wander off to find your sister, will you? She's out playing by the Barrow Fields gate. Remember, you haven't given her a birthday present yet. Don't tell me you forgot to get her one. Well, I'm not bailing you out this time, son. Hmm. I tell you what, I'll give you a gold piece for each good deed you do around Oakvale. That should be enough to buy her a present. Now, get moving and stay out of trouble. Around. Oh, he's <laughs> Let me hear some good reports about your behavior, and I'll give you some money for your sister's birthday present. Brother, I hope you haven't forgotten what day it is, like you did last year. I'm sorry if I woke you up last night. It was another of those dreams. I was standing in this field when something happened, but I can't remember what. Never mind that, though. I'm still waiting for my present. Honestly, where's that good-for-nothing husband of mine? Where's that filthy layabout husband of mine? <laughs> With some woman, I don't doubt. I run his house, bring up his children, and what do I get in return? Nothing. If you find him, let me know, won't you? Oh, 
thank goodness. Listen, lad, could you do me a favor? I've got to, you know, answer a call of nature. Oh, stay here and watch this stock form. Just stand between those two stacks and don't move. I'll put a good word in for you when I get back. Right, won't be long. My cousin says that the barrels in these warehouses might have stuff in them. Quick, while he's away, smash his barrels up and see what's inside. Unless you're too scared. Unless you're just a big blubbing girl. Come on, let's go and break stuff. Are you just going to stand there like a lemon? But being good is so boring. Wouldn't you prefer to be smashing things? Come on, there's still time before he gets back. Oh, you're no fun at all. Fine, have your stupid good deed then. Excellent. Thanks, lad. You've done me a big favour. I'll let your dad know what a splendid watchman you made. Sorry, son. Not the time for you now. Please find Rosie. But if you think that I'll turn a blind eye to your mischief, you're very wrong. Look, try to keep out of trouble, please, for me. So, have you got enough money for a gift for Teresa? I've heard you being bad. What will your mother say? Pack it in. I was just, um, I, I've never even met this woman. Who is she? Look, Sonny, keep your mouth shut about this, right? My wife's at home with our little ones, and I'm supposed to be working. But a man should be entitled to do what he likes, don't you think? Tell you what, if you keep this little secret, I'll give you a gold piece.
Just don't tell my wife. I can't let her find out about this. I love you more than any of the others, my little honey pot. Do you really love me? No one understands me like you do. Let's tell her now. I can't wait any longer. You scrumptious little I'm a trader. I wander the world buying and selling wares, especially to find folk like your good self. Some little girl I saw said you have a sister, and it's her birthday. And it seems you haven't got her a present yet. It just so happens that I have a rather nice box of sweets here. Guaranteed to put a smile on any sister's face for only three gold pieces. I'm afraid you seem to be short of funds, Sonny. Just three gold coins is all I ask, and your sister will love them. Remember, your father will give you money if he hears good reports about you. You, you little ruffian! I've heard reports that you've been doing bad deeds. Destruction of a person's vegetables. That sort of behavior is not acceptable. If you were older, you'd be apprehended and fined by the town guards. You need to decide if behaving like that is worth it, my young friend. I'll leave it at that for now. But think about what I've said. He'd steal your apples as soon as up you with your chores. Where's that filthy layabout husband of mine? <laughs> with some woman, I don't doubt. I run his house, bring up his children, and what do I get in return? Nothing. If you find him, let me know, won't you? You have? Right. I'm gonna turn him into Balverine food. Thank you, young sir, for telling me. Wait till I get my hands on the... I want more pocket money. What do you want? I'm just dealing with this brat. He was irritating me, playing with my sister and her stupid teddy bear. No, he won't give it to me, just because I said I'd rip his stupid head off. I told him if he doesn't do what I say, I'm going to make his life a misery. Get him off me! Please help! He goes around the town beating up anyone smaller than him. But you 
look strong. I bet you could scare him off for good. I'm a man of my word, so here's the gold for your good deeds. But if you think that I'll turn a blind eye to your mischief, you're very wrong. Look, try to keep out of trouble, please, for me. So, have you got enough money for a gift for Teresa? I've still got these sweets. Quickly, give me three gold pieces now, and they're yours. Young sir, they are yours. Wish your sister a happy birthday from me now, won't you? You never can tell with that kid. That boy don't know the difference between right and wrong.
I knew you were going to bring me chocolates. It's just like my dream. Come on, let's go home. Mother will be back for my party any minute now. Wait, there's something wrong. Bandits! <laughs> It's really happening. They're here. You've got to hide. <gasps> got one. Evil had come to Oakvale. Bandits wielding torches and steel, slaying and burning all in their path. Blood-red flames lit the night as the villagers screamed and begged for mercy. And soon, their bodies filled the streets. Then the raiders reached the last house, where the boy and his family lived. It was them they had slaughtered so many to find. The father fought to protect his kin, but he was no warrior, and fell mortally wounded. The bandits ripped the house apart, but could not find the boy. Through torture and threats, his mother and sister remained silent, and their furious attackers took them both. From the nearby woods, the boy watched as all he knew was taken away. His whole life was crushed to ashes. He was alone. We must leave. It's not safe here. They're all dead. You don't want to join them, do you? Then give me your hand. you'd have a stronger stomach than that. Come on. <sighs> Save your energy, boy. It's not me you want to fight. You might not realize it, but I just saved your life. There's nothing left for you in Oakvale. And if you'd stayed, you'd be as dead as the rest of them. Come with me. My name is Maze. 
and I'm the head of the Guild of Heroes. You must have heard of it. You'll find nowhere safer in all of Albion, nor a better place to call your home. And if it's vengeance you want, you'll need the training only we can offer. Here we are. I'll introduce you to the Guildmaster. He'll be your guide from now on. I have a new student for you. Put him in the dorm upstairs, with the girl. You don't look much like hero material to me, but Maze knows what he's doing, I suppose. Well, follow me then. You'll be sharing this room with Whisper, one of our brightest young pupils. She's playing in the woods right now, but you'll meet her in the morning. For now, you should get some sleep. Your training starts tomorrow. <laughs> it's time to wake up. You must be my roommate. Hmm. Shorter than I expected. My name's Whisper. I've been here for a month. Had the room to myself till now, too. But that's all right. You know you talk in your sleep. Sounded like a bad nightmare. Happens to a lot the first week. Some don't even last that long. You won't either if you don't get moving. The Guildmaster is waiting for us in the map room. You don't want to be late on your first day. Follow me. Hmm. Looks like the Guildmaster got tired of waiting for you. He's probably at the training grounds across the river. Let's go! The Guild front door. Can you imagine what it'll be like when we're ready to leave? Finally... All right, lad. It's time to see if you've any potential. Get in the ring. Now then, I want you to hit that dummy as hard as you can. Just keep going till I tell you to stop. making much of an impact there, are you? Here, try with this. Ah, now that's more like it. When you destroy an enemy like this dummy, it drops an experience orb. These orbs contain the knowledge gained from killing the creature. It's very important that you collect these orbs, or you won't learn anything. Now pick it up. Well done, lad. Now then, tomorrow we'll... That's the guild alarm. 
Sounds like there might be something loose in the woods. This is a good opportunity to test your spirit. I'll wait for you at the Guildwood's entrance while you deal with the problem. Once you're done, we can talk about starting your training. Good work, lad. Those beetles can be a damn nuisance. Here, I think you've earned yourself some pocket money for that. If you want more gold, I'm sure the servants could use your help with something. Or you can get an early night. The guild was now the boy's life. The memory of the Oakvale flames still scorched his mind. But soon he had no thought other than training, and he became stronger and more agile with every passing year. His days were filled with grueling exercises, the nights with study in the library. Finally, he was ready to become a guild apprentice, just as Mays had foreseen. The real training was about to begin. Get out of bed, lazy boy. We were supposed to meet the guildmaster on the other side of the river, but that was an hour ago. We better get going. Race you there.